This is lab 25 on the dog specimen. So here we're working on some nerves on the head and we're on the right side. So we do have our right side here, but we're also going to be going back and forth between the right side and the left side. So there will be a lot of switching back and forth and then also if you have something that's better on one side versus the other, try and look at it there so you get a good example. Um, and then there will be a lot of kind of going back and forth between medial and lateral and ventral. So anyway, just bear with me and I'll try and point things out and keep it clear for you. All right, so we're starting on the lateral side here, just at the base of the ear. So you're digging down deep underneath your parotid salivary gland. So I kind of tore that apart, actually. And I tried to keep the parotid duct intact here so I could have that reference point. But then I kind of cut through the gland itself. And then you're digging deep in behind the ear here. So what you're looking for is the facial nerve. So here, if I stick the forceps way down in here, this big part that the forceps is around is going to be the facial nerve. So the facial nerve is giving off a bunch of branches that we're going to identify now. So the facial nerve kind of swings around that base of the ear and gives off some of these little ones right here that are going to be caudal auricular nerves or caudal auricular branches right here going just to the back of the ear. Okay, and then we have the ventral buccal. So this big branch coming off here, going around, is ventral buccal. So ventral buccal nerve here. And the next branch we'll look at coming off of that facial. So your parotid duct is in between these two. So you have ventral buccal here, and now we're looking at dorsal buccal here. So here's dorsal. Parotid duct is right in between those two. So dorsal buckle, and then we have the auriculopalpebral nerve here. So then auriculopalpebral has a few branches you want to note on these. So here you're going to the front part of the ear. You're going to have some rostral auricular branches. So here's rostral auricular. The ear is right here. And then you have some palpebral branches. It's going up towards the eye. So those are going to be palpebral branches going that direction. Okay, one other thing to note in this dissection field, let's see if I can pull it out here. There's another nerve, some branches of nerve coming out kind of deep to and in front of the ear rather than behind the ear where the facial nerve comes out. So these are actually coming off of the mandibular nerve and it's called the auriculotemporal nerve. It's just giving off some branches here. So in that same dissection field, you're just looking for those nerves kind of coming out there. All right, for the rest of the mandibular, we're actually going to switch to the left side of the head. So I'm just gonna switch these out. And so we're looking in this deep dissection that you did on the left side, and you kind of pull out the mandible a little bit. The rest of our mandibular nerve is going to be all of this right here. So coming out here, mandibular nerve is all this nerve tissue you see. So then we're looking at the buccal nerve, which is actually broken in this one. So right here would be buccal nerve. And then we have three branches that we need to identify coming down this way. So here, coming off of mandibular, then we're going to have lingual is the first one, so the most rostral. I'll try and get the probe under it here. So lingual nerve will be this one. The next one will be inferior alveolar. There we go. So inferior alveolar is the second one there. And that's going into the mandibular foramen here. And we'll also note that there's an artery of the same name going with it. And then the third one is a smaller nerve. Oops, right there. And that one is the mylohyoid nerve. So we have lingual, inferior alveolar, mylohyoid, and up here was buccal, right here. So then that lingual nerve, if you want to trace it, it does go down to the tongue as the name implies. So here we can see it. So this is a ventral view and I pulled the tongue out of the mouth. And here, coming down, is that lingual nerve. So here if I kind of put the forceps around, it will do the trick where you put the forceps around and then kind of backtrack and hopefully we can see that that's, yep, coming right out of here. So that's pulling on that lingual nerve there. 
All right, so the, you can see lingual going actually to the tongue. Okay, then on the next part, the maxillary nerve, we're also going to use this left side of the head. And so maxillary is also in this deep dissection. So maxillary nerve will be here. And the only part of maxillary that we're really going to see other than this is as you come out of the infraorbital foramen, rostrally here, all of this is all infraorbital nerve. So that's the continuation or terminal part of the maxillary nerve would be there, the infraorbital nerve. Okay, then we're going to go back to the right side of the head. And we'll put this back here. So now we're moving on to, you're following your cum or your vagosympathetic trunk right here. And you're actually going to cut up here so you're on the medial side and right here is the longest capitis muscle. And you're actually just going to cut that and reflect it caudally. So I'll try and hold that out of the way as we go through this. So you have vagosympathetic here. And then here we see it breaking into two parts. So this part is going to be your cervical sympathetic trunk, and that includes your cranial cervical ganglion, which we had mentioned in a previous lab, but it's this enlargement here. It's cranial cervical ganglion. Then this portion is the vagus. So right here would be vagus, and here's the cervical sympathetic, and then coming together is the vagosympathetic trunk. So coming off of vagus, there's a branch that we want to note right here. And I'll try and pull this out so you can see it. This is going to be the cranial laryngeal nerve. So this is going into the larynx right here. That's by my thumb. And so this is cranial laryngeal. And then also on your list is the caudal recurrent laryngeal, which we had before. Let's see if I can even see it. Okay, here we go. So here was that caudal recurrent laryngeal, right here, and that's actually going to be that caudal nerve going into the larynx. So we did see a part of that before. Okay, and then the last thing on the nerves section, we're going to flip this back over, is the hypoglossal nerve. So here, you can see part of it here, but the majority of it you actually want to look at down further, down by the tongue. So we're going to do a little ventral view here. And it's this big one right here. So this is the hypoglossal nerve coming out right here. All right, so that should be it on the nerve section. So now we're going to move on to some of the cervical structures that we should know. So we have our thyroid gland. So here is one lobe of the thyroid gland here. And if I flip it over, here you can see the other side. So this is the other lobe of the thyroid gland. And my dog actually has a small isthmus, kind of connecting those two lobes, which you don't see very often. But it's this brown line you see connecting those two. So that was kind of neat. All right, and then on this lobe of the thyroid here, we have this oval part. It looks to me like it's an external parathyroid. Usually they're a little lighter in color, but this little nodule kind of sticks out like a parathyroid would, external parathyroid. So that you can look for those. They're usually light colored and oval. Usually on the cranial end is the external parathyroid if you want to look for that. Okay, then we have the esophagus, which we did before. So here is the esophagus, which has been cut open. And you have that pharyngoesophageal lymen, which is the border between the pharynx and the esophagus. And we have the trachea. So trachea is here. And you just want to note the tracheal cartilages, so these C-shaped cartilages are the tracheal cartilages. And then we have the medial retropharyngeal lymph node, so I'm going to flip it to the lateral side. And we have the medial retropharyngeal lymph node, which we did find before, but it's right there, that oval lymph node right there. Okay, now on to the common carotid artery. So the arteries, if you have one side injected better than the other, you can use that side. You can try and do it on the right side. If your left side's better, go to that side. So here we would have a cranial thyroid artery. So our thyroid is down here. So cranial thyroid artery there. And as we follow common carotid up here towards the head. So internal carotid should be this one 
and has this little bit of an enlargement right here at the base. And that should be the carotid sinus. Some animals will have a really nice one, but this one isn't very big. But just enlarged at the base is carotid sinus, and this is internal carotid. And we can verify that by going back to our side here where we've cut open and see that that artery is actually the one going right here up into the head. So that's internal carotid. Then the other part is going to all be external carotid. So the rest of this here, the big piece, is all external carotid versus that internal, which we saw coming off here. And in our dog, um, it branches a little bit differently. So this one is actually the caudal auricular. So here I'll show you that really quick. So you can see that actually coming up and through and going right to the back side of the ear here. So that one comes off a little bit differently than it should, but that one is the caudal auricular. Okay. Here we have a cranial laryngeal artery. And then here we have a lingual artery. And then another piece, so coming off right by your internal carotid, this next one should be the occipital artery, right there. Okay, and as we follow this up, this is where it gets a little tricky to see, but we'll try and do our best. So here you can see this branch coming off, and that will be the facial artery. And then facial, you'll have to follow just a little bit and then look for the sublingual. So here I'm just gonna move it a little bit here. So here's that facial coming off, and you're following it along and seeing the branching, where then it breaks into a continuation of facial artery here, and then the sublingual artery here. So facial, continuation of facial, sublingual artery. Okay, then we did our caudal auricular already, which came off a little bit differently. So here we're following our external. So the forceps is around the external carotid. We're gonna to continue to follow that, and it just comes through kind of in that deep dissection field we had earlier. So hopefully you can see that coming through right here. And we're going to look for the superficial temporal, which will be this branch coming off right here, going in front of the ear here. So superficial temporal artery, and then but after that comes off, then right here where the probe is, is then the name change to maxillary artery. So right here would be maxillary artery. And then our maxillary, just like our maxillary nerve, we're going to look at on the left side. And so maxillary is not as well injected on here, which is why I didn't do the whole thing on here. But, so here would be that superficial temporal coming off. This would be maxillary here. Maxillary continues. And then you have that inferior alveolar artery that we talked about going with the inferior alveolar nerve into the mandibular foramen. So that's right there. Then this one is the caudal deep temporal, and you're just going to see a stub because we've actually cut where that attaches to the temporal, temporalis muscle, I should say. All right, and then you're going to continue following maxillary, and it's going to go through the alar canal and then reemerge up here. So maxillary reemerges here and then comes the external ophthalmic. So that's going to be where the forceps are. And as you continue to follow maxillary, you'll kind of have to move things out of the way to follow it. And here it's starting to lose its injection. But maxillary will give off some palatine arteries, which you can maybe see one right there, elevated by the probe there. And so after the palatine arteries all come off, then you'll have the terminal portion is the infraorbital artery. And that again, we can follow out here and it comes out with the infraorbital nerve. So infraorbital artery, again, loses its in injection here, but you can continue to follow it out there. And that's it for lab 25.